The following program is for mature audiences only. None of the information provided is intended to be medical or any other professional advice requiring licensing through any regulatory agency. It is for entertainment purposes only. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Amy Satori. I'm an intuitive spiritual counselor assisting in raising the vibration of our planet. I was born with extraordinary gifts, experienced enlightenment for six months years ago, speak light language, and channel a being called Celeste who is an ambassador for a galactic council of 60. I am able to scan your energy field for emotional blockages and talk to or aid in the healing of your organs using Qigong energy healing. I can also help you make decisions, talk to your pets, deceased loved ones, and your friends and family's higher selves. I can help you navigate your relationships and answer pressing questions in your life by talking with the unseen world. I use these skills I've developed to translate the images, feelings, impressions, and messages I'm given while tuning in to you and your situation. I work Thursday through Saturday as a psychic for the Lighthouse Bookstore downtown Boulder, Colorado, and conduct remote readings all over the world. You can order a private reading from my website at amysatori.com. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow me here on Podbean, Instagram, my 1111 Twin Flame Forum on Facebook, and YouTube. Set a reminder in your phone to call live on the show any Sunday, 530 Pacific, 630 Mountain, 730 Central, or 830 Eastern to ask me a question, receive a blessing, or have me do some energy work on you. So my friends, without further ado, let's get to today's show. Welcome to the Satori Show. <laughs> this is your host or hostess, Amy Satori. Um, you guys been having crazy dreams too? I've been having so many, so many crazy dreams. I feel like they're so real that I get confused in the middle of the night. Like, wait, am I am I dreaming? Is this for real? <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. And I just have this impending feeling of something is about to dramatically change my life. I could be feeling that for you guys, and I know that I am, um, as well as myself. So it's kind of it's kind of a trippy feeling. <laughs> it's kind of trippy. And I don't know uh, if you guys are aware of this, but I just put out um, a video about supernatural experiences I've been through, including... Um, I don't know. I don't even want to blow it. But these ones this week are the scary ones that I promised to tell you about um, from the last one that I made. Uh, so they're kind of they're kind of cool and spooky. I feel like my microphone's a little bit. There we go. I think that's better. Okay. Okay. Um, hello. Oh, hello. I just got beeped. Hi. Hi. Yay. Um, <laughs> And I've talked to you once before, um, so I wanted to call and give, like, a little update and talk to you again. Um, <clears throat> so I called in in September. I don't know if you remember me, but the gist of it was that I was like, I don't know if I should, like, talk to him or reach out to him. And you are like, just call him. Like, just call him. <laughs> um, and so I didn't call him, but I did – what I did is I made him this drawing – uh, because he and I are both artists, and we've always connected over art. So I made him this drawing of these, like, two doves in the moonlight going towards this, like, star. And I felt like that just really, like, <clears throat> sorry, I have a cold, so my throat's, like, all, uh. but um, yeah. I felt like that really encapsulated the way that I felt. And so that was back in September, um, and he immediately responded, and, like, so we started talking, and um, he was like, wow, that's so beautiful, and he shared some of his art with me and I shared more of mine with him. Um, and Aww. since then, yeah, it was really sweet. Um, since then we've been talking kind of on and off. Um, and it's been a mix of things. It's been like really joyous. And then there have also been moments where I've been like, Oh God, I'm being like triggered again. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, you know, just like <clears throat> some of the like anxiety around texting him and worrying if he's going to like, be ghosty about it um but we just had like a really major like breakthrough that was like just really amazing um <clears throat> so he I sent him like a pretty vulnerable and excited message about like wanting to talk to him and stuff and then he 
didn't respond. He ignored me. And I was like, oh, not again. Like, no. (laughs) And I got, I had all sorts of feelings about it. I was mad. I was sad. I was anxious. I was all this stuff. Then, you know, I did like my stuff and I I worked through it. And then a few days later, I, I composed this message and ended up sending it to him. And it was something that was very respectful and like I felt like it conveyed my like care and love for him but it was also like super just straightforward and honest about like my boundaries because that's honestly kind of a boundary for me at this point with him about like not responding so I just said you know like awesome um, yeah I was just like I don't wish to be ignored and I really would love to talk to you and and care about you but um if you would like to be in contact with me I ask that you communicate directly and respond to my messages um and so Something incredible happened where he actually sincerely apologized and was like, he made a commitment to be better about responding to my messages. Um, And was like, yeah, I, you know, I will be, I will respond to your messages. Like I will try. Um, And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. (laughs) That's all I've ever wanted. Like, so. I know, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so that yeah was just like the best thing ever just to have him be so sincere Aww. and like I'm sorry and I'm going to talk to you so um Aww. and then I think the the only uh, reason I've, that I've heard not... I've heard just to just to also confirm um I've been hearing more reports of both of these the last caller and this like these reunions are actually starting to happen reconciliation so they're committed <laughs> huh it's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. And um I mean they're reconciling on all kinds of Are you there? And this is not okay. One 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 feminine was like, if you're gonna call me, I don't want it to be about superficial stuff. I like I wanna talk about what's what what's happened. <laughs> you know, what's happened between us and like get to the you know, let's not let's not have the elephant in the room, let's address things. Yeah. You know, so stuff like that. So that's really great. Really great. Yeah. And so really so the ahead. only reason I think that I'm like not in his arms like right this second is um he is actually he's in Missouri and I'm from Colorado and I met him in Colorado and I had no idea that he was gone. Um <clears throat> but he's working for FEMA and so he's doing disaster relief out there and got like deployed. He's been out there since July I found out. Um Oh, okay. Yeah, so I asked him when he um, is coming back to Colorado, and he said that November 28th, um, he his contract technically ends, and at that point he finds out <clears throat> if he's being extended to stay in Missouri or come back to Colorado. Um, so that's kind of a like a burning thing for me where I'm like, well, on one hand, I'm just like, well, I like I know that whatever is supposed to happen will happen, so if he's meant to come back, he will. And I'm also curious if you have – a sense about what's going to be happening for me in December um, after he gets this, whatever decision it's going to be, um, if you wanted mm-hmm. to feel into that at all. <clears throat> okay, in terms of if where, okay, tell me the two places or the three places you are wondering if he'll end up at. So he's in Missouri currently. And then right. it's about if he's going to have to stay in Missouri or if he's coming back to Colorado. Colorado, okay. So no other options, just those two. Okay, Colorado um, or well, Missouri. You might get deployed somewhere else potentially at some point, but. I wondered, okay. All right, hang mm-hmm. on a minute. Let's see. <sighs> I feel like he's kind of leaning toward Missouri. No. No. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know Bye. why. Um, work. I think they might that he might be offered something out there or something. Can you can you move to Missouri? I, no. So the thing is that he is working out there, but it's not supposed to be like permanent, and it's not really up to him if he um, stays or if he stays deployed. You know. But no, I'm going to school in Colorado right now. I can't move to Missouri. I have another year of grad school. Oh no. <laughs> so but you mean yeah, if he? I mean they could. They could make him stay there? Yeah, so here's the deal. He's working for FEMA, and so he gets deployed 
to go to like areas of disaster. So Missouri has flooding right now. So he got, right. he, he lives in Colorado and they sent him out there on a deployment. November 28th, he finds out what they're doing with him next, which they could send him back to Colorado or they could extend it and say, no, you're going to stay in Missouri a little while longer. I think they're, I think they're going to keep him out there longer. Uh-huh. Let me feel into how long he'll be out there. Let me, let me okay. feel into that. Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> I know, right when you guys are making progress. But yeah. you guys can, you know, keep talking over the phone, um, you know, and, and get the rapport built back up again, you know, get that trust to travel back and forth. All right, let me see here. Um, how long is he going to be staying? Oh, how mm-hmm. long is he going to be staying? Uh, could be through July of next year. I mean, you know how these oh, things. God. You know, no. I predicting time, but I do think they're going to ask him to stay out there a little bit longer. Mm. Hopefully I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully I'm wrong. Um, oh, there is a chance. Go ahead. There's a chance like after the holidays, um, he might either take a break and come back or they might actually let him come back. But I feel I do really feel a pull for, for asking him to stay longer. And he wants okay. to. He wants to be. I mean, he wants to be with you, obviously, too. But it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something, something about Missouri he really likes, or something. Okay. Yeah. You I wouldn't think. You wouldn't think. <laughs> with all, the, what? What's with all that's that? going on. I said you wouldn't think that he'd be that he'd be finding Missouri appealing right now. Yeah, come on. I'm the biggest appeal. Let's up with that. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> He knows, he has a, there's a, I have a feeling that he's um, feeling confident that you guys will be together. So yeah. I think that he just, he's got faith in that. Yeah. So, I have faith in and that I just too. saw the temperance. Yeah, I feel, I just saw the temperance card with that. And the temperance does mean like divine timing, trusting in divine timing. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want anybody else. I don't feel like he wants anyone else. I just feel like, yeah. um, Got he's got stuff to take care of, and so do you right now. I think that you guys will continue to talk and and kind of reequate for a while, and then you'll come together. When okay. are they going to come together? I feel like um, August of next year. Holy shit! And I didn't then they'll be <laughs> wait so long. Oh man! Okay. I know it's like we think that the minute they start talking to us, we're like off and running, and that is yeah. happening for some. But um, but really, it's like realistically, try not to put the cart before the horse. You know what I mean? Just try to figure that there's going to be some, <laughs> you know, some getting reacquainted and building rapport stuff going for a while. Yeah. Oh man, they're saying like, like date. I, I don't know. Like I've been kind of dating casually, and I don't know if I should just like stay single for like a year or just like date guys casually to be like by the way I feel like I have like an eternal love with someone that's probably going to happen at some point I don't know (laughs) (laughs) as long as you know about that yeah I was saying to Ambrosia the last caller sorry about that guys I don't know what the heck happened all of a sudden I couldn't hear her and it, it looked like I was still on the line but anyway what Ella so, okay, here's here's my advice on that. If you guys continue to commit to each other, you keep talking, he he shows more and more of a of of closeness and vulnerability and commitment and he asks you for a commitment, then I think that, you know, obviously you won't be dating other people, but until then I wouldn't put all your eggs in in that basket. And I also wouldn't put it to the people that you're getting to know that you have this love that you're eventually going to be with necessarily because you don't know that. You don't know that for sure, you know. And if you fall in love with somebody else and you guys start a life, then you're not going to want to be with your twin. They're not that strong. I mean, you can choose whatever life you want to, you know. You don't have to be with him. And if he doesn't, like, step up his game, then you're eventually, you're not you're not going to wait for him forever. But it is very promising that you guys are talking. I'm glad you guys are talking more regularly. That is awesome. You've broken the silence. You've, like, yeah, ended that big separation period, which is the toughest thing for them to do. Um, So 
keep dating until you guys actually have that conversation about commitment. Um, and don't talk about him like he's a certainty in your future to the other guys because he's not. <laughs> okay. So let me get to the next cola. Hey, Joanne. Hi. Yes, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. How about you? So I'm so excited to be on. Um, I didn't, wait, wasn't able to get on last week. So a couple things. Um, so one, for certain, like, career change, I'm, um, I've am i been in the healthcare industry. Actually, your story, so crazy, your story almost is replica of mine with healthcare Whoa. and marketing director. Oh, yeah, like scary. I had chills. Um, so 20 years in the healthcare industry as an executive director. Um, oh, wow. Senior living. Yep. I'm 43, so I was doing it since I'm 19. Um, long time. Okay. Anyway, the last two properties that I was running, I was literally, um, I was let go. Basically, I call it redirected, right? Not just redire- rejected, but redirected. And that's what I'm seeing now. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling into it. And it feels better after the healing and everything Mm -hmm. I've done around it. But I'm not knowing, like, since meeting the twin last November, it's like this roller coaster, and there is separation now. But since then, it's like this roller coaster of um, curiosity, emotional, mental, like, inspiration. So I've been creating all these programs. I'm hearing I'm going to be speaking. I'm supposed to be teaching. They're telling me I'm going to be on a show with you a couple years. I mean, I'm <laughs> hearing all this. Yeah. So my intuition, psychic, all that clairvoyance, clairsentience, all that has increased with the healing that I've been doing. Like I've really gone really deep but by choice, right? It's a choice. Awesome. Yeah. So, <sighs> I'm just needing some direction, like, what do I do? And P.S., since I was um, redirected this year, I have been applying resume after resume, big companies, and been rejected. I'm not joking. I, I can't even count how many times. Wow. So is it like spirit saying, get the hell out? Excuse the expression. Yeah, that's a, and that's a redirection. I know you're scared, <laughs> but go ahead anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just saw I just saw the word speaker also, um, but it's not like you're going to jump right into speaking. There's got to be something in between, right? Yeah, um, like the, you're supposed to be Starbucks, but yeah, yeah. It's like you said you've been coming up with a program, right? Because I feel you like studying and writing, um, and then I see you like diving off. So I'm diving off, but I'm oh, in the middle of like reading books, and I'm in the middle of writing four books. No, oh. it's crazy. Oh, like I got fine. stuff flowing through me like water, but I'm got oh, so much awesome. fear because where's it going? <laughs> like you need income. Like what? You hear me? Like do I need to be more direct yeah. with the universe and God? All right, and let me see. Hang on a minute. Well, I mean, get a job if you have to, even just a regular job. It doesn't matter as long as it takes the fear away. You don't want any fear there. The fear is going to interrupt your flow. So get a job if you have to and just just keep writing. Just keep writing all of this material. Make that your primary focus, I would. Okay. Um, Stay in that creative energy and just get like something part-time or, you know, something silly in the meantime. Okay. Um, Just to alleviate that stress. Like are you getting for me to just start doing some videos, like coaching? I. Yes. Yes. Um, YouTube videos for sure. Start a channel. Get that going. Your website for sure. Um, also, like, hang on a second. Um, you got to get some testimonials built up. All right. Well, I have a so whole even if book from them, but okay. Good. Put those on your website. Okay. Or on a YouTube video or something like that. Like people, you okay. know, they don't know they don't know you yet, so they're going to rely on on what these other people are saying about you for a while. Okay. Um, also, hang on a second. Um, affirmations are going to be important for you right now. Visualization and affirmations. 
Yeah. You know, I... I like to say that one, um, I am, you know, I am so completely loved and supported in all ways and always. And then also, um, I feel like I've won the lottery in every area of my life. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world, and you are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I love that. I just giggle when you really, say that. <laughs> <laughs> you're really in the flow right now. You're really in that synchronistic flow. I can feel it. Um, so just what if you, you in fact. With the, with the, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Go ahead. Well, this is crazy because it's like if you if you really had the faith, if you really were just like, hey, I'm in the flow and that's it, I do feel like money would start coming in from different directions. I mean, mm. you, you know, I've had the craziest things happen to me. I've okay. I've had so much given to me for free. I've had people hand me a lot of cash. I've had people like, you know, uh, the, start paying for everything. <laughs> it's like, okay. okay. You know, yeah. so it's not... Yeah. If you're if you're really in that flow state, if you're really in that really super receptive and trusting state that the universe is taking care of you, then it will. It it will. And it's it may not don't think that it has to be in the form of that of a particular job that you've been in. You know, don't Got put it. any kind okay. of limitations on it. And in fact, and if have- you were to go to, if you were to go look for a job, then go um Look for a job in such a way that you're excited to explore opportunities and possibilities. Have that kind of mindset. Don't go, oh, i got to get a job. You know, you can go online and and just browse through everything and try to think of of you being like a contributor contributor to something that's already going that you would be happy to help out with. And it would be a great exchange money for you being able to help out with this project. You know, you don't have to make yourself... and like forget mm-hmm. forget the previous like the ego mindset right like his ego mindset as well. I was making this amount of money. I'm worth more because that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying with the with the jobs. It's like, well, I'm worthy of more. Same thing in the relationship sector. Like, why am I going to settle for breadcrumbs when I want when I I deserve the whole loaf of bread? Mm, yeah, um, but you can if you're grateful for the little, then you will be given a lot. So, okay. you know, when I when I first got to Boulder, I took a job at Home Depot. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, and that did not pay much. And yeah. um, and I had to stand on my feet all day long. But I loved Home Depot. I thought, it, you know, I, I just was comfortable there. Um, okay. It was a place I enjoyed being at. So I thought, well, at least I've got that. I'll just go in with that. And then I loved yeah. it. And... I met a couple loves of my life there. So it uh, ended up being a very positive thing. And it was the foundation to to build off of, um, you know, kind of, it was my it was my diving board into what I'm doing now. Yeah. So don't down. judge anything. <clears throat> yeah, don't, don't judge, judge anything. And I got a lot of valuable information there that I'm now using to, for, for my new home. I'm able to fix things and... And do things that you know normally in a relationship the guy would have done, you know. But I'm I'm doing it um, because I've had that experience now. So it all um, it all is in, yeah. It's all part of it. But no, do I something hear that brings you joy. Do something that and makes that's you happy. I've been really focusing on even you since I've been introduced. My my best friend Sylvia like introduced me to you, and I've been listening to you, and it's really been. I want to say thank you because it's been inspi- it's been inspiring me to do what I'm doing just to hear your story and how similar it is to mine. And then also this year as a feminine, like no joke, every, like my, my serious relationships, all these guys coming back, like to have to to have to work forgiveness and just seeing people and having to move mm-hmm. through. And it's just been so oh, cathartic, but a lot of grief, you know, a lot that, of grief. That's, yeah, and that's a lot of, oh, my gosh, you guys, I'm like so much of that is going on. People from the past that you totally forgot about are coming forward. Oh, with yeah, feelings. with apologies. And like, and, like ready to get married. They're wanting to, they're or wanting to, the you know. They're calling, you know. Yeah, they, the some of them are karmic. <clears throat> they're not, they're not always like true love, but just a lot, a lot, a lot of people coming forward. <laughs> a lot do you, do you forward. feel or say anything regarding that with me, Amy? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of feels to me like you're going to have a lineup. <laughs> One after the other. After Fire, uh, Fourth of July? In terms of, well, you were asking about guys. Um, yeah. In terms of 
jobs. Mm, I think there's going to be one soon, a really cool opportunity that you could pass on or take. It's up to you, depending right. on, you know, depending on a lot of things. But if you pass that up, I think mm-hmm. there'll be another one in like a month. Okay. So that other one should come in like mm, probably within a week or two or so. Okay. And I think you're going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So if you don't, yeah, um, just, just, you know, say those affirmations, stay in a really high vibe state. If you, you know, here, okay, here's the thing too. If you're in that meditative creative state, you're in a high vibe state. That meditation of you writing and letting this stuff flow through you, just that state in itself is going to be attracting incredible opportunities. Okay. So any way you guys can meditate, even if it's a coloring in a coloring book or or whatever, you know. Mhm. Just it, when you're in that creative state, it's like you're you're channeling the universe and and doors will open up for you like crazy. Okay. But you got to trust that. It's all a placebo, you yeah. know. You got to believe that. Well, and I feel like so that's, that's the two biggest, I don't know if the other women on this call are, are experiencing, but faith and trust this year for me has been huge, and I've been really been called to just trust the process, my process, mm-hmm. and have faith mm-hmm. in what you can't see. It doesn't matter whether it's a relationship or the job, whatever, right? So, so true. Yeah. And trusting yeah. your intuition. Trust your yep. intuition. And stay yeah. true to your authenticity, period, because that's what's going to get you through to where you're going. Just staying true to you and what resonates for you and only you. <laughs> and only me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Um, so for those of you who don't know the history there, um, I was a community relations director for years uh, for retirement living. In the corporate world before I did this, isn't that funny? <laughs> okay. Uh, Sylvia. Hello. Hello. Guess what? You were just talking to my friend Joanne. He just talked to you. <laughs> she was, she's a friend of yours? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I introduced her to you. So um, oh, cool. it's nice to hear that. Well, it's nice because we, we met like a year and a half, uh, three and a half years ago. And one day we start talking about Twin Flame. You know, Twin Flame, one of those things you don't want to admit out loud. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, uh, Twin Flame. And she's like, what? And then we start talking because <laughs> not too many people I know I could talk about it, you know, one-on-one. Yeah. So real quick, and I know you have a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been Thank you. playing with that energy of the higher, the higher love bit about five and a half years, and uh, I didn't know it real, and uh, because you know it's all about intuition and uh, inner masculine and feminine, so I let go of playing with that energy uh, around October of last year, and I thought I have anxiety all my life, which I think had to do with my intuition. But um, okay. I let go of being tacked to that one particular person. And I was still playing with it, but then that person um, picked another person. So by December, I telepathically told that person I had enough. And um, and from then, I, ha- I went to a big workshop um, that had nothing to do with Twin Flame. And my intention was to overcome anxiety because that's something I had, you know, for like decades. Uh-huh. And from that night on, since the workshop, it's eight months now, the February of last year, I've been having nightmares every night. And I think it's a dark night of soul. So I'm wondering if I have to do with the twin flame thing as well as, you know, my extension. Like it's every night. I've been doing spiritual work for 20 plus years. And I haven't never experienced, I'm wondering if it's my health or so anything that comes to you, is it related to twin mm-hmm. flame breaking up? I don't know. What's going on? What what you're hearing? Is there a theme? A what? For the nightmares. Is there a theme for the nightmares? Um, maybe post-traumatic? I don't know. 
That's traumatic. Okay. Let me is feel it, into um, it. Is it like when you sleep, when you call sleep apnea? I don't know. But it's like every night, like intense. And um, recently, um, I went, I got in contact with my twin flame, and I realized that it's actually real versus in my mind. And now I'm going to play with that energy. So I'm wondering if it had to do with being out of alignment. You know what I mean? Because sometimes that happens. Mm. So I'm just wondering, is it a health mm. issue? Is it a mental thing? Is it a spiritual? I don't, I don't think it's any of that. I think it's spiritual. I think it's, I think it's uh, emotional growth. And let me feel into it, though. Hang on a second. It's Thank subconscious. Uh, it's sub- subconscious purging, subconscious stuff coming to be dealt with. I, if I were you, I'd be writing them down in a journal or right. something, it, even if you can't, do you not remember them? Sometimes I don't, but I'm going to start writing them because, you know, Joanne was talking about yeah. faith. And um, I went back into my twin flame energy um, because I realized it was legit and I'm playing. I'm, so what happened is that night I dreamt, not of him, but like another made up guy. You know how dreams, they just make up yeah. people. And, um, I was acting a certain way, and then one point he pointed a, a image of a painting and with faith. So I'm going to start writing them down, and I'm, I am I am myself writing a book too, of course. And um, okay, good. so I, sometimes like, I don't um, remember them, but it's okay. just intense, like eight months in a row. I never had that, you know. So it's just weird. Uh, yeah. I think you need to to be writing those down, and I think you need to do um, what I call a divine guidance council meeting, um, and that is basically just sitting down and inviting all your guides in, anyone who loves you and supports you unconditionally and wants you to be happy and wants you to succeed in life and all that kind of stuff. And then um, you just picture like a clock in front of you, and then you ask, you know, you, you might set the intention, I want to know what all these dreams are about or I want to know what what are the important messages I need to know, or that you know, that kind of stuff. And then you go to like and say, you know, who is at one o'clock? And and then you and then you see if anything appears in the circle or see if anything uh like a name could come or like um an object or you know, any number of different things can appear in the middle of the circle. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I'm just listening. Okay, good. Um, do I do that before I go to I'm bed or when I wake up? I know. <laughs> you like, did I lose? Do I, do I do this before I go to bed or, or when I wake up in the morning? Anytime at all. And I do okay. it usually like before bed because I'm just, okay. it's a nice way to relax. Um, but you go all the way, you, you ask 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, go all the way around. You don't have to go all, completely all the way around, but until you have some answers, and it'll get you really in touch with your intuition and with your guides and stuff, too. Okay, and that's you really also, interesting. I'll um, try that. Yeah, and if nobody's at 2 o'clock or at 3 o'clock, just skip to the next uh, peg, you know, mm-hmm. and don't worry about it. It, it makes there be, it makes there like um, be no pressure. If that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So let me see. What, let me ask. Ask though, in general, like what this is about. What are her nightmares about? Why is she going through all of this? It's like, yeah, it just feels like even past life stuff coming up for purging. They're trying to accelerate your growth. They're trying to get you to grow faster. Like I would. I'm glad. I'd like. It feels like you should be glad because it's like burning stuff off for you. And I guess if something really bothers you, you could do that. Um, you could try and try and just look at it from like um, it just feels like be grateful for it, let it go. Be grateful, let it go. Like okay. don't hold on to it and don't think anything negative of it. Just let it move on through you. And right. um, you could even do that exercise. Thank you, God, for my misery. If some kind of trauma comes up, like thank you that that happened in my life. And then list the benefits and advantages as to why that's a really good thing, you know. But turn it around to the positive, whatever it is, and just thank thank the universe for showing it to you. And it just feels like out of that place of gratitude rather than fear, things like things will start becoming more clear to you. Yeah, that um, makes sense because that makes sense. To the first three months, I was terrified, 
And then I'm like, what the heck, you know? And then after like the fifth, six months, you start going, okay, what is this, you know? And mm-hmm. um, it does, you know, feel like, because I went to that major workshop. So they're very intense and okay. very deep. And okay, yeah, it did, that makes sense. It happened that for, so, you know, it, but it just, it was eight months in a row. That's why I was like, yeah. so I, I'm going to be more it grateful like- for it. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. It feels like I don't a cleanup job. It, it, it feels like good. you're cleaning up your subconscious mind. So good, I would good. take it as a really good thing. All righty. And, okay. So me, I have other questions. But... I Well, let me do a light language blessing for you because it feels like it okay. could help some, clear some of this out faster. All righty. Okay. And we'll go ahead and ask your some question. Sleep. But help me. Re- what? I need some sleep. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I'll do a blessing for that too. But was that going to yeah. be the other thing you were going to ask me? Um, we'll go with the flow. We'll see. Okay. All right. Hang on a minute. Everybody, just relax your shoulders. How am I making a lucky shot and send say like the epon? I'm getting some say like the etan say like the isa. He mok mok on pon pon chan se halikiri tin da da isa asiki chan pok ha maliki ina ha ma ma ke halakshu kon pon pon sala ena de la kiri na tsena. Okay, so they also said to um, to do something positive to to counterbalance or count like um, don't just wake up and go. Oh, you know, I had I had this nightmare and kind of like let it linger a little bit. It's more like clear the energy by being like jumping up and being happy and like counterbalancing it. Okay. Like going the opposite direction, like going super happy and waking up like like uh, saying affirmation, feeling great, doing some kind of guided meditation. Like they want you right. to like switch the energy up, and it's going to help it like release faster. Okay, so good. and well, then did, it'll be like less and less of it happening. That makes sense because I the first three months I would let it linger the whole day because I was like, "What the hell okay. going on?" And then once mm-hmm. I realized maybe it's just kind of some major um, sentient thing where things are clearing up, even though I still don't like getting these funky dreams, it I wake up and I don't um, live in it anymore. I just wake up, go okay. So what you're suggesting mm-hmm. makes sense. Makes sense. In I a, do have in a other way, dreams. You could look at it. Go ahead. Well, you could look at it like this. Um, going through this for eight months is accelerating your process by like ten years. So I'd rather like have the eight months really of does. intense nightmares, you know, than wait, you know, ten years to wake up. But wow. I gotta go. Um, I gotta go get some more of these colors. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to ask another question. I really appreciate it because it's been <laughs> on my mind. And I you know what? I get a lot of golden golden nugget listening to you, talking to the others anyway. So take care. Yeah. Thank you so Bye. much. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Um, hey, hello. Amy, thanks for, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah. Um, so I... I'm just totally confused, and I was hoping you could, you know, shed some light. I spent the weekend with my DM, and um, Friday night we kind of, like, argued the whole time, and then because we were drinking a lot, and it was just this past time, the rest of the weekend was fine. Well, you're cutting out. Um, I can't hear sorry. anything. Oh, oh, there you sorry. are. Okay. I think I went way too far from my phone. Um, so, so yeah, so we spent the weekend together and it was, um, really nice except for the first night we were together. Um, we were arguing and kind of bickering and, um, and all that kind of stuff. And he's still, you know, living with his karmic or whatever, but he's been sleeping on the couch and he's about to leave, um, that apartment soon. And I'm just really confused as to, you know, he's not very clear he seems kind of like you know he won't tell me how he feels about me really and I don't know what he wants and it's driving me crazy (laughs) it's driving Um, me crazy and I don't know what to do I want to walk away I don't want to walk away I don't know what to do 
honestly, I mean, this is where most feminines are right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's like um, a very common theme right now. So he will, if it's, a, it's good that he's talking to you. That's a good thing because that's, like I said earlier in the show, that's progress. I'm hearing more and more about this, that the masculines are finally coming forward and talking um, mm-hmm. with their feminines, coming out of this separation period, coming out of the silence. But they, a lot of them are spotty. I would uh, listen to my video, um, Does He Really Love Me? Look for that video that I just put I out. I think one. last I week. I did see Yeah, it. watch yep. that. I didn't watch, watch it, it only, it. and I watch all of your videos, but I didn't watch it because the ghosting me part, like he's never ghosting me. We've never had that kind of like separation thing. We just, we haven't. So, but I will watch it. Thank you. Okay. Is it, yeah, because it really explains the masculines and what they go through in terms of like coming to you. And I feel like he's, he's just, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to involve you in the breakup. I feel like he's leaving that other person. And he doesn't want to involve you in his mess. So he's trying to keep detached to to a certain degree to keep you from being in it. So try to have some grace. I know that you've had a lot so far, I'm sure. But <laughs> but try to... What were you guys arguing about? Um, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> I knew it. Um, uh, well, I haven't just been super frustrated because he won't tell me how he feels about me and doesn't, like, he won't tell me anything. It's just his lack of communication, I guess. And But, yeah, okay. you know, t- telling me, like, yeah, he, there's no plan. I don't see a future here. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm trying to have faith yeah. and hang on. You feel me? <laughs> yep. yep. So gotcha. I was drinking and I was emotional and he was drinking and he was him, so... I don't know. It wasn't even really arguing. It was just like we were laughing and then we'd like bicker. And and I don't know if part of that is because we had been arguing the weekend before via text or whatever. And we finally saw each other and it was like pent up stop. Or if I feel like part of it is when he leaves his apartment and we see each other, he feels bad about leaving his apartment. And somehow he like that situation affects how he acts towards me. True. True. You know, and they feel bad. They're not living authentically. Some of these guys are living like double lives until they finally break up with the karmic. And that's what um, you so that's me really tough he too. Felt bad. So Yeah. And it's hard because I feel oh. bad too. I'm not like, oh yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. I'm like, no. So I mean, okay. So my advice would be to just um, let him know, and if you haven't already, which maybe you have, let him know exactly how you feel and what you would like to have happen between you guys, or at least just let him know how you feel about him. Mm-hmm. Then do not talk to him anymore. Okay. I mean, unless unless he initiates and unless it's like from a heartfelt place, unless he's being sincere and he's offering actually something up, and and I would just like set some kind of boundary, like let me know when you guys break up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, sometimes there's situations where, I mean, you guys know each other fairly well. You guys have we been do. doing this for for a while, so it's not like you guys need to get to know each other to see if if you guys do indeed have chemistry or whatever. Certain situations can be different than what I'm saying, but since you guys know each other really well and you've been talking for a while, it's like it's it's like rubber meets the road. Rubber needs to meet the road soon. Like something needs to happen. And so uh, a lot of these guys will get a lot of clarity when you pull away, when you pull back away and just let them have plenty of space to think it through. That's what I would do. I would just I would just be like, just let me know let me know when you want to talk and when you actually are looking to to move forward. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep I don't want to keep having feelings for you and have you stay in the situation that you're in. It's not fair to me. And he'd probably agree. So I don't even know if I would put it that way because they're so insecure. They'd be like, "Oh, we'll just go ahead and go with some other guy." You know, exactly a thousand percent. <laughs> they're such martyrs. Martyrs, I know, like it's like, really tough. 
Especially when you're a strong, independent, you know, female who's smart and has their stuff together. Their biggest insecurity is that you're going to find somebody better. And it's so funny because that's the feminine's insecurities too. But if they can just admit it and just work together on that, then it'd be cool. They could heal each other, you know. They could help each other heal. So um, everybody's got their insecurities. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. He loves you as much as you love him and vice versa. That's just the point of the whole thing. And if you guys can just get out of your unhealthy relationships and come together, then it would be awesome. (laughs) But he's not going to say it. As long as he is able to to be with both of you, it's going to be easier for him to just stay there. So I would just pull back, pull back away from him. And I would be dating until you have a commitment, you know, a verbal commitment from him. Um, I would I would date if if other options come along, which they will if you if you pull back from him. So I guess I'm just afraid to pull back because I'm afraid it'll go away forever. But it's really just causing me a lot of um, yeah. agita. I mean, I know his lease is up in like a month. Do you see him getting his own place? Like. What mm-hmm. what is the I, I actually do. I do. I do feel him going away. I feel like he is um but I think you'd have a better chance of him going away if you go away first. Gotcha. You're that's what could give him the, the fire the fire under his butt that he needs. You know, he Sometimes someone has to miss you before they can. They'll be brave enough to do something about it. You know. Yeah. They got to feel that absence. So I would just let let just be just do it all very honestly though. Not like not playing games. I'm just like mm. just tell him this really hurts. You're in a relationship. We can't really go any further than where we're at. And I don't want to be cheating on on your person. And I want this to be a true connection. And I want to go deeper, and we can't because of the situation you're staying in. So just put put the ball in his court and just tell him you're going to leave him alone until something can change. Until something changes, you're not, you know, you're not going to be available anymore. That's what I would do. Got it. Well, thank you. I have one quick other question for you. Um, I applied for a job interview with my job, or I went through a small job interview with my job on Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. Um, Any idea if I'm going to get this new role in my current job? You already went on Thursday? I had one on Thursday, and I'm waiting for a call back. To see if you're going to go on another one? Yeah. Mm Okay. Okay. I don't think this job is the one. Okay. I think there's another one around the corner. I think you might find the next one in a couple weeks or something like that. I think you're going to like it better. Okay. They might they might want to interview you and it would be good practice. But I think you I think something else is better for you around the corner. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, and they they just said don't settle either. I just feel like I'm beating my head against the wall lately with everything I'm coming up against. So it's just frustrating. Well, try to use <laughs> try to use some of those affirmations to get in, it, in an excited, anything is possible kind of state of mind. Got it. Even if you have to listen to Abraham Hicks twenty four seven, you have to listen to good meditation yeah. constantly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. I definitely you <laughs> heard it because I was. <laughs> Do what you got to do because it really works. Even though, I mean, people get so impatient. They think that, oh, I did a guided meditation today. I should have the job tomorrow. It doesn't happen that fast necessarily. Right. Um, but it'll happen, especially if you are get, get in a habit of staying in that vibration. That, that's what's key. Okay. When you start having all kinds of crazy signs and synchronicities just off the charts, mm. that's when you know you're really in the flow of making your dreams come true. And all those things that you've been manifesting and putting all that energy into visualizing and affirming, it's all its all coming to you like a freight train. But I've you, you got you to gotta stop. you got to keep the momentum going. A lot of people quit after a little bit and say that yeah. it doesn't work. But 
you got to keep fueling that positive energy. It's going to make you feel better anyway. Who wants to get de- depressed and drunk all the time? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I definitely do. I do. And it's I know it works. No, yeah, works. it'll be good for you in every single single way to stay positive. So just do it for your own uh, for your own benefit. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. I know you have a million other people to talk to, so I will let you go. Yeah. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. Hello. 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 Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, my name is Unique. Well, hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, a long story that I'm going to try to compact it really, really small because I know that it's a lot of people. So, um, <laughs> have a twin. I have a twin flame. Met him last year, so we've been in a relationship for a little over a year now. Met him last year. It was a long distance situation because it started because it started online. Um, it it went great. It was going great. Um, we both were on the exact same page, as in he was spiritual too. So we pretty much connected that this was like a past lives type of situation from the moment that we talked. So our situation would wow. be a tad bit, tad bit different from most people. Literally started planning life, marriage, wedding. I'm talking about within the first, like, we know that we were married in another life type of thing, and we finally wow. met each other. That, that's how intense okay. it was. So okay. he li- we lived in two different states. The plan was that I moved down here. Um, so we met in, like, a sept- at the end of September. Um, I finally moved to where he was in the middle of June this year. Um, there was a bunch of ghosting in between. You know, I didn't know anything about the whole ghosting situation like that. Um, but I just finally got to a point like these are things that I really can't control because I'm not there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was mm-hmm. like, I have a re- and I do have a relationship with God. I'm extremely intuitive and things like that. So I was being kept abreast of things intuitively of what I felt. So okay. fast forward, finally got, um, finally got here. And then he is super shocked because I didn't see him as soon as I got here because I heard God tell me basically a couple of weeks later, go go to his job. He has a business with his mom. That's a whole other situation too, but has a business with his mom. I showed up out the blue. He knew I was coming because I picked the place. I picked the place down the street from where he um. I picked the place down the street from where he lives on like on purpose because it was like, oh yeah, when you get here, we're moving in, yada yada. We literally had plans. This was not just in my head. It was he came to see the place and all of that. Okay, so okay. fast forward, mm-hmm. finally get here, meet him at his job. He's like, oh my god, finally the first time you know that we're seeing each other face to face actually, and then it's like oh, my God, I got something to tell you. You're not really going to like this kind of deal. I'm like, uh, what? Like, you know, that, that's not what I want to hear, right? It's been, okay, mm-hmm. so he's landed himself in a whole nother relationship a month before I got here. Not that he didn't know oh. I was coming. He didn't think that I was serious. What? Oh. What do you mean? So I get here <laughs> in a whole nother relationship. And I'm like, don't know what you're gonna do, but he, but I'm definitely that a very dominant kind of situation. And I seen him on that night. I was like, I don't know what you're gonna do, but if you're not in this place at 11:59 um, a.m., the I mean p.m., the relationship is done. Because I did not uproot myself and my son and come all this way. Um, you know what I'm saying? For nothing at all. I yeah. do have friends. You know, I did have a um, like a, a spiritual sister, kind of some spiritual family here um, as well. But the neighborhood that I'm in is because of him and him wanting me to be right. in the same neighborhood. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, see him, he's like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do, yada, yada. Anyway, he did show up at 1133 that night, right, before 1159. Whoa. To say, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, that kind of deal. So he showed up, but it wasn't that easy. He showed up, um, and we, you know, we talked that night, yada, yada, um, and then he left uh, to go to work, all to come back 
to then tell me because he made it seem like he had left the left the lady or whatever. Um, but come to find out, he came back off to tell me, I don't know what to do. This is too much for me. Yada, yada. Can I just date both of you all? What? What are you talking <laughs> In a whole nother relationship, sir. We were in. What do you mean, date the both of us? That's not happening. Then it was. Well, I think she's pregnant. What? This is what? It just gets bananas. This is a whole nother book. I'm telling you. And I'm like, okay. I went I went into, I was just like, you have got to be kidding me, God. I was like, I know the vision that you gave me. I know what you said to me, that kind of thing. This can't be happening. This cannot be happening. And sure enough, when we were standing there, I'm bawling my eyes out. And it was like, literally, I heard my angel say to me, she's not pregnant. And I said it directly Oh, my God, that's what I was just feeling. I was like, I said it directly to him. I was like, she's not pregnant. He was like, what? How do you know that? I was like. She was lying to I keep heard. him. Yeah, there you go. And I found that yes. out. So we fa- we've passed that. Let's fast forward past that. We found that out. He had to find it out for himself. He had ghosted me again to basically go back to her to you know because she reeled him back in kind of thing. And then he found oh, out Kermit the truth. Terrible. Yes, and then he found out the truth, and he was like, "You were right." So he came back moping oh. with that. So ever since like about July, <laughs> it's been. I've been ghosted kind of every month since then. So finally, we're up to this point right now. Finally, I'm like, this is the last time. I I had get, gave him the key because, you know, um, God, it was a sense like God wanted him to be confident that this is, this was really what this was, that he he isn't overthinking it or this really is real. He got obviously terrified that I made, that I made good on the promises that I said that I would. And mm-hmm. so it was, was he really ready for that? That's what it right. that's what it then became. But so really? now it's like everything is in his face now. So there became people that didn't want us to be together. Uh, my, his mom had a lot to do with it, people on his end. Unfortunately, he has a business with his mom and still lives with his mom. We are 10 years apart, about eight years apart. I'm older he's younger so that has been kind of there that's been the situation in that now it got to the fact that the last time he goes to me and finally came back I'm like I'm not going to deal with this unless he's coming back with a with a solid we're going to be something I'm moving in you're finally moving in the whole summer has went by and haven't moved in nothing so he picked the date Right? I, I held the phone up to him with the calendar. I'm like, okay, you pick a date, right? Because I don't want to do it. <laughs> you pick a date. He picks a date. The date was supposed to be the 24th this month. Oh. The date was supposed to be the 24th that he picked. <clears throat> we had been seeing each other a few days, you know, up until that point, because when he came back in, it was somewhere about mm, this, um, October 8th or 10th or something like that. So he picked the 24th. Okay, fine. I had I said I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to bring it up to him like I did the previous month when I thought he was moving in in September. He has the key. He has picked the date. So I'm going to see what it is that he's going to do. So on the 23rd, he um maybe like the 21st or something, he had a bunch of clothes and things in his car or whatever. So I'm thinking, okay. He was like, well, I'm going to go to the car and get this stuff. So I helped him bring the, some of the stuff in. So in my head, I'm thinking, right, that okay, he's bringing some stuff in. So that seems like progress, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. seems like progress. So then he goes into saying days, days later that his clothes need to be washed. Oh, okay, well, who's washing? And we're like, we're, like we're, who, who's washing your clothes? So... The 24th is when he was supposed to be moving in. The 23rd, he came to want to pick up his clothes. And I said, okay, tonight I'm going to know what his plan is going to be for tomorrow. So I'm like, okay. I was like, you're supposed to be here. What's the deal? Oh, I'm going to come pick up my stuff. Okay, so he came. 
to pick up his stuff. So I'm like, so what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow is the moving date. You know that, right? He actually pushed it up to the 23rd at one point. That's what he told me. I pushed it up to the 23rd. Okay. I said, so tomorrow's the 23rd. What's the deal? Um, He was like, I got it. Just relax. I knew that I that I was not going to deal with that. As a, as a, as a, like, you're not just going to tell me I got it because that, that's not – we've been down that road before plenty of times and mm-hmm. you haven't had at all. So I'm not going to put up with that. I was like, what's the, what is the actual plan? Are you going to go to work and then you're going to load your car up, you know what I'm saying, and bring the stuff down? I was like, oh, I got it. Don't worry about it. And he was supposed to be going to a friend's birthday party this weekend. So I'm like, no, what you're not going to do is ghost me again and then disappear because this is the kind of stuff that you do. <laughs> you disappear and then you ghost me. You come to get all of your stuff and then you finna ghost me. I said, as a matter of fact, give me your keys. And then he was looking at me crazy. I'm like, I'm not going to take your keys. I'm just going to get my key off the key ring. Right? And so yeah. I got my key. And he's like, wait, what are you doing? And I was like, I, and I started packing his stuff. I was like, you don't have any plans on moving in here, and I am not going to do this with you. Then he then he did the whole. Well, what do you mean? I thought that I thought I picked that date so I could think about it. Now you want to play dumb with me, and you want to <laughs> try to insult my intelligence. I'm like, I'm not gonna do this with you. So this is where we are now. I let him go. <sighs> I, you know, I I got the key from him, and. You know, he made it seem like this time around he had been doing work on himself. He was like, I've been connecting with my higher self. I've been, and I believe that. I, I believe that he has. But I just mm-hmm. want to know where is he because I feel in my heart, my spirit, my angels have told me to not leave him. I know that sounds crazy, but I connect with them because we have a extremely divine connection that's very protected by God. And we have a mission, definitely, most definitely, and a purpose together. He's also seen our future baby girl that's coming. I've seen our future baby Aww. girl. We've seen her in dreams. He's come to me about her. Um, so She's we adorable. Know, aw. So we know that this is solidified, as as well as him connecting with my son. When he first seen my son, he also knew that he he knew my son from another life, that he also was his son in another life. It gets she, really deep with us. She's, Super she's deep. showing up, right? She's doing a little curtsy in a cute little short yellow dress with braids. Aww, she showed up she, That is so she, <laughs> and we have her so name. Cute. The angels gave me her name and everything. I had picked her name Aww. last year and all of that. I haven't let him know it yet. I was like, I'm not going to let you know it until you get in here. <laughs> so, he's going to be so proud I, of himself. When, he, when he's finally able to do this, and he will, he's going to be so proud of himself and going to be such a proud dad. I just feel him like feeling like a king on top of the world when he's able to do this. Yes, because he's been trying to put a baby in me for a minute. And I'm like, look, <laughs> I was like, you have to solidify yourself in this home before this can happen. It's mm-hmm. not time, but it's coming. I know it's supposed to be yep. coming in like a couple of months, actually. <laughs> so, yep, 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 so, yep. <laughs> so I'm very aware, and he's very aware. And he'll rub on my belly and be like, yeah, you're going to be throwing up in a couple months. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> These are things that you cannot do if you are not solidified oh here my gosh. in this family. So I am just trying to figure out, is he definitely going to make this move? Am I going to be waiting forever? I can't even think about uh, trying to date other guys because this is uh, not over yet. I know it's I not feel, a, I know. It's not yeah, a. I feel like he's going to be, um, that he'll be in there by the holidays, before the holidays, he just said. <laughs> so before mm, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I had to walk away this time. Like, I, I, I've i walked away this time, and I'm proud of myself, okay? Divine feminines are taking job. the power back. So I am proud of myself for mm-hmm. being the one, because you weren't going to ghost me. I was like, you were not. I was like, I was leaving before you were going to ghost me this time. I had to do it first. 
So um, I just yep. really needed to know that. And was he coming back? And I was like, because I can't even think about dating. I'm trying to, like, get on dating sites, you know, that I was on. And I've been asked for dates and things. And I'm just like, I'm not in it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not in it. And it's not there for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just well, stay true to that. Okay, that's that's good to know. I feel like I feel like really good that that's that's where my heart is, and that's what I keep hearing the spirit say, you know, say to me. Yeah. And um, they said that he he uh, really regrets doing that, and he's going through a major transformation right now that's leading to you guys having that new beginning you guys have been wanting. So just let him go through that. Okay, okay, I can do that. I've been waiting forever <laughs> already, like most of us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for us. Lordy. You know I mean? Oh um, man! But I do think that with our situation, this ha- it it really has um what do you call that manifested extremely fast. Like we both manifested this. Mm. We both. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was that was something that will be beautiful about our story. Um. In the end. So thank you so much for that. And um, my last thing is. I am struggling with my place um, with career-wise, career-wise. Um, I want to do life coaching, and that's my heart, my desire. Like, like life coaching, books, speaking, that is where I'm at. I'm currently in a life coaching class. Where, I mean, I'm currently in a life coaching certification class right now. Um, I've done mm-hmm. it all of my life. It's just I want to get to a point where I'm able to do it professionally and make money, you know, doing it. Um, so mm-hmm. that's kind of where I'm building myself, but it's like it's so slow. Like you know, my mom is helping me from this move that I made down here. She don't know all the details yet because it's not time. <laughs> it's not time, mm-hmm. but she has mm-hmm. been helping me because I also help her. But I want to disconnect from her helping me. But it's like God just keeps on giving her stuff so that she can give it to me. It's like he keeps, like, elevating <laughs> her position so that she's able to still keep taking, you know, uh, helping me where I'm at, and I'm trying to pull away. Like, I'm trying to have her not take care of me. I'm trying to take care and solidify myself, and that's okay. what I'm working on. So do you feel anything? <sighs> um. Hang on. So I guess the question would be, should she get a job? Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. I have been working on it. I have been working on it, but it's just like it's the ones that I've been coming. I'm like, I don't want to be doing this. Like, I want to be doing something that mm. matters to me until I get like, to that. Yeah. It. It just. Just like I said to the caller earlier, do something fun that you enjoy, like working, for, like delivering flowers or doing something because that I you actually enjoy. Home. Oh. I, I'm sorry, I have okay. to say this. I work from home because I homeschool my son. My son is um, autistic, oh. and I homeschool him. So I have to okay. work from home. So all of my jobs are, are work from home, kind of customer service okay. kind of thing. Okay, I can say that. What Let about? me say this, and then you can kind of. I wanted to start doing and felt like I needed to start applying myself in, like, the outbound sales kind of thing, deal just because I have a gift of gab obviously, and I haven't been using it, and I have been pushing myself away from this field, like, all my life, (laughs) because I've wanted to stay in the background, so I haven't done it. Well, I could actually see you doing something like Etsy or something, like, like doing some kind of arts and crafts, even with that involve your son. I could see you selling some, oh, I, I actually have a clothing line. Maybe that's what you're saying. <laughs> I okay. actually have a clothing line that's on. Etsy I think, and I have a. a I think and I have you need to. Uh, you got to. I, I, I feel like you're also going to be making some holiday stuff for some reason, like wreaths and all kinds of like, like Christmassy type stuff. So I don't know if you're going to get a different Etsy account, but I think it would be cool um, even to. Can your son help make stuff with you? 
<laughs> he doesn't, his attention span isn't that. <laughs> I can I can do I can do some 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 projects okay. with him, but he he likes his tablet. He is a he's a techie kid. He he gets it from me. Mm. Um, so he likes his techie. He likes his cars and his techie type stuff. He's a builder, so he likes to build. Okay. Um, so tracks and things okay. like that. I gotta go. So um, I'm just gonna say though, uh, I'm also seeing Hallmark cards and like holiday stuff. I think if you start, um, yeah, it's like huh. come up. I don't know. That's what I'm getting. Oh, is those two things are gonna be really big throughout the holidays for you so on writing? Etsy? Yeah, writing holiday okay. cards or making holiday cards, um, huh. even stamps involving stamps and decor. I don't know. Just get creative. But okay. I think that that's okay. going to be like a really big hit for to get you through the holidays. But we should probably do a private consultation to go deeper into it because this this feels like it goes a lot deeper than just a five minute conversation yes. <laughs> on the show. So okay, yeah, okay. Should I, should Thanks, I go, girl. Maybe I should go to your site and sign up and um for yeah, a keep, and keep me posted. Keep me posted because that's a very interesting situation that you've got yourself in. I know. Um, Thank you. That's it's been all my life. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and you said your your name is unique. Unique. Yes. Mhm. Okay. Well, I'll remember that. It's unique. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you so much, me. You have a good night. You're welcome. Have a good night. Bye. Okay. I can probably take just one last caller. Hello. Hi, Amy. Yeah. Hi, Amy. Hi, this is yeah. Callie. Hi, hey, uh, Kelly. So I, hi, yeah, I wanted to give you an update since I saw you, um, uh, saw you <laughs> since I called you on Wednesday. Um, basically, I had a huge shift uh, this weekend. Like, let's call it like the most intense meditation that I've ever had, and I just had the hugest shift. And I <laughs> I might cry talking about it because it was just, like, everything clicked about this journey. And I just felt the love from my twin and, like, love for him, even though I'm not seeing it at all <laughs> in the 3D. Mm-hmm. And it's like I understood how we came together in, in this life to, like, allow each other to be... <laughs> our very best selves and, like, have everything that we want and be everything that we wanted. And, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah so it was just, you know, it's been a year and a half since we met. Um, and in our session on Wednesday, uh, you said that it would be good if I text him and kind of, like, intervene with his, <laughs> since he's seeing a karmic now. And, um, so I texted him this morning, and of course he did not respond. Um, and I am taking it as you know, again from what I learned this weekend, it's like this: this is happening for me, not to me. Like he's doing this mm-hmm. for me, and maybe the energies that have shifted or are shifting, they just still need a little bit of time before they actually like are processed and moved and all that before like it actually integrates. Um, mm-hmm. But I was just wondering if uh, you sense a huge shift in him coming in the next, like, few weeks at all, too. Like, is he getting rid of his karmic? Is he realizing his worth? Yeah, but let me pull some cards. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, yeah, you were trying to save him for, from his karmic. Didn't he leave someone else, and then he ended up wanting to no. go to no, the next No, he was seeing karmic? no one. He was seeing no one, and I reached out to him, and then... <laughs> And then he started and then he seeing started someone, seeing and he was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, no, he's good. He's good. Um, he's working on becoming husband material, and he's he wants the end of this difficult period and the beginning yeah. of a new dawn, and he wants to start a right. new adventure with you, the Knight of Swords and, and victory underneath. He's going to, he's coming for you. <sighs> This is that Knight of Swords energy like, we were tapping into earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When I sent the text this morning, though, was he, what was he feeling when I sent it? 
Um, he's got uh, pulled three cards on that. Oh, transformation! It caused transformation. Ooh, transformation of the karmic. They have a lot of conflict. Oh, yeah. The two Ooh. of them. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's he he wants to put death to that relationship, and then you yeah. caused him also to, to love himself to become more grounded and mature. He felt like what you had to say was truthful and honest, and and it re- really resonated with him. And it's balancing things out and making them go forward. I actually um, oh. before I fell asleep the other night after my huge like shift. Um, I got, like, a ringing in my right ear for a second, and I was like, okay, is this, like, a spirit who's crossed over? Is this someone currently here? Nice. And I was like, I was like, I think it's his karmic, and I think she's telling me that she's going to step it up and, like, be really rude to him to, like, help him get the picture, like, help him, like, figure his stuff out. And I was just like, thank you. (laughs) That is so cool. Um, yeah, I also so. put the two, the two of cups and the hierophant, which is knowing that you're his true love, and the hierophant is yeah. marriage. Yeah. So <laughs> you you just basically you sending that message just made him realize that you're it for him. Yeah. So wow. now he's just got to now he's just got to pass all the tests that you got to pass with a karmic. You know he Can he you could do have these white language blessing for that. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Anything we can do to to help yeah. that along, you know, those cards, like, man, they can be sticky. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> this is for everyone, everyone in a similar situation um, who need help from sticky karmics. We're going to clear that energy right now. Happy <laughs> Hanebuku la kriita na pa esa. Ashikinza la ki eno. Ama ke ma ba ke esa la ufsho sona tetela. Hepari inpa kinza la ki inza. So what, what were they, they were talking about um, letting all the karmics and the masculine see the truth in all things so that in their heart of hearts they know what their truth is and then to have the courage to go toward their ultimate truth. And their most authentic future. Perfect. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yay! Well, thank you. That's all You're I. Welcome. Yeah, that's all I needed tonight. <laughs> so thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. Have a beautiful okay. night. You too. Bye, Amy. Bye. Bye. Um. Just because you were sweet enough to hold on till the very end. <laughs> if you have a quick Aww. question, I'll go ahead and answer your question. <laughs> I do. I I wanted to know, um, uh, I was given about four months ago, a, a man came to me and um, he told me that he wanted to move Holy Spirit through me and, um, and give me my language. And I, I felt like what he was saying was, you know, the light language and Mm -hmm. um and so he had told me you know to continue to practice it don't feel self-conscious and and stuff and um and he kept calling it speaking in tongues and i i i don't know if i'm making it up if i do you know what i'm saying did you feel that way in the beginning oh yeah oh yeah yeah Um, you it was like it was like okay, so we should probably back up a little bit. The light language okay. to me is like soul soul speak, and uh-huh. I what happened for me is I was listening to Vanessa Lamorte um, on okay. YouTube, and when I heard some of what she was saying, like some of us started to almost seem familiar, and I was like, did I speak that when I was little? And it was like oh. it somehow. It seemed really familiar and I was like that's weird and I was like and I tried to pronounce something that I had heard her say and I was like blah, 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 blah. That, that, blah, uh-huh. was it this or was it I tried to make the sound again basically and once I made that sound other words yeah. were coming out and so then I would practice oh, wow. in my car dr- just driving along going blah blah blah, 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 blah and then um, uh-huh. and it kept getting better 
as I would go along, it would kind of flow more smoothly. And right. then, you know, I kept talking to a psychic friend of mine and asking her to tap in, like, am I doing it right? Am I this? You know, like you're doing with me. Uh-huh. And she kept encouraging me. She says, yeah, okay. She goes, you're like at third grade. Now you're at fifth grade. Now you're at eighth grade. Now oh. you're in college. And oh, I just kept me. getting better. And and then it started improving and getting better all the time. And then it was like, at first I started out doing like an intention, like I want to heal my elbow. And so I would do light language about that. And there were no images okay. or anything else. But then I started to... um then I started to do the light language. And then, you know, when you, when you do it for people and they get chills and goosebumps and feel incredible and all this stuff happens for them, you're uh-huh. like, okay, you get more confirmation. And then yeah, after you that, it that up. Into, yeah, and then, and then it turned into me getting a bunch of images and stories and things that I would see when it was happening. And I started feeling like my whole council was working through me as, as part of this light language. We were all working together because I could see – in my mind, I, I couldn't tell if I was creating what was happening or they were doing it, and I was just observing it. It kind of feels like right. it's a cooperation between all of us, like we're all doing something, and I'm just like reporting on it to the person that I'm working on. So it evolved right. over time uh-huh. to where it is, uh-huh. to what it is now. <laughs> and that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that with me. Mine, when it comes through, it it's like a it, to me it's it all flows like it's a song or I don't and mm-hmm. and so then I'm I'm like am I even doing that right you know because that's how there's nothing I you know I can't do it in monotone or or anything it just feels like it's a it's a song you know it's and, different for everybody um, some people okay. draw it yes and and there's some uh-huh. there's hundreds of different light languages. Right. So I would go, right. you could even, I, I took a recording of my language and I sent it uh-huh. to Vanessa and I asked her, have you ever heard this? Do you know what it is? And she thought it was Lemurian. So you can always yes. record it and send it to her and, and ask her opinion too. Right. It feels, yours uh, feels Lemurian to me also. I, um, when I, I, it's a movie, Lost City of Atlantis or something like that, when it came out, the Disney one, I, uh, when they spoke, the Atlantean, the the Atlanteans, you know, because people didn't know about Lemuria around then, <laughs> you know, so mainstream. Um, I oh my gosh, I, it just resonated so much with me, and it was it was crazy. Tears I poured down my face, yeah. you know, and and um, but I didn't feel like I resonated with with Atlantis until I learned of Lemuria. And um, and I felt like your light language that that's that's where it feels like to me, you know. I, I mean, I that's mm-hmm. where I think of every time I hear you. And so, mm-hmm. um, when I start when I do mine, it's like I'm singing a song, you know. And and I don't recognize any of the like the syllables or the words as being the same as what I said maybe the day before. And so I'm not really practicing it because I'm wondering, am I just making it up or is it, I mean, does no. it come from that's life? Or? Yeah, that's the thing you got to go through is that doubt. <laughs> okay, can, you yeah. You not care. You just got to let the words fly and do it as often as possible. Do it in your car, do it at home. Okay. In fact, uh-huh. can you do it now? Can we hear Yes, I'll you sang it. that I'll beautiful song, so I could do this. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Yay. Yes, thank okay. you. My mom and I, we watched it, and it was so beautiful, and your story and oh. the healing that you were experiencing. You know, I feel like us as the audience, we were all holding that energy for you so that you could have oh. that moment. You know, it was thank so beautiful, you. Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yay. That was the. Okay. By the way, she was ta- she's talking yes. about the video that's called "Holy Father, Grant Us Peace." If you guys want to watch that, okay, go ahead. Yes. Okay. <laughs>
I don't know. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. And that was at one hour and 11 minutes, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. That was so beautiful. And that just, like, I don't know about everybody else listening. Put it in the comments below. But, geez, I was lit up like a light bulb. I you don't think I made that up? <laughs> oh. Like, yeah, you made it up. Okay. Your higher self did. Well, right, yeah. <laughs> Very, very healing energy, and and if you keep doing that, you're gonna you could even heal your own ailments. It's oh, such a happy. I love it so much. It's such a happy feel. Um, I oh. I feel like it's like from I don't I don't even know where this would be, but I'm seeing like these really sweet little cute little creatures, almost like from that movie Avatar or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I uh, I don't think I've lived here very very much, but I do feel that um, I definitely was here in the very beginning, you know, and um, just from a really a high vibration. And so being mm-hmm. here in this human body and everything sweet. is just, whoa. <laughs> it's like very sweet and innocent. It's almost like I'm feeling like fairies riding dragons and yes, like happy, yes. happy-go-lucky, like, not a lot of bad stuff was going on back there back then. No, it was like, not at all. No, it reminds me of. Yeah, it has the energy of like. Remember, um, uh, how to train your dragon, toothless the dragon. Yes, toothless dragon, the black, yes. the black uh, dragon. He, uh-huh, you're, that's you're kinda, like he kind of made, made me think. Of I, I know exactly, exactly what you're saying. Really? That just that. Wow. Yeah, that uh, naivete. You know, that innocence of, like, um, a child and and really no common sense, as an earth person would say. You know, don't you have any common sense? Um, No, not if that's it, you know. But uh, (laughs) I, I definitely... I have have that energy and and uh when I met my twin flame um his name is uh is Lucifer and and uh heavy name to carry you know in your yeah. life and uh but his middle name is Fonze so he's the Fon so if you are going to have something <laughs> as heavy as Lucifer as your name then you better be cool <laughs> like the Fon so you know <laughs> And uh, he and I both were just like these these wide eyed children, you know, just like whoa, human, whole, you know. (laughs) Yeah, keep it up, girl. Keep practicing. Just uh, just keep uh, talk talk it all the time as much as possible, and it'll start really flowing for you. Thank you so much, Amy. I uh, that was really that was liberating to me (laughs) to be able to do that. So proud of you. That was awesome. Good job. Oh, you did. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. I figured if you could sing like that and tell that story about your mom and your dad and just oh, feel those raw emotions. And I saw your mom there with you while you were singing, oh. you know, and she got, she drew in closer to you mm-hmm. and you got stronger, you know, and your, and your shoulders were uh, broader. I don't know, just the way you sang it, you know, over mm-hmm. Oh, it was it was really neat, and yes, tears. I was just like bawling. It was so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you got to let those feelings out. It is so healing. That felt absolutely. so good. Yeah, I was like, and you were so cute. You were like, of me. absolutely. You're like, if you could memorize the words to this song, that would be a good idea. There's like five words, and I was, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be a lot. But it was so cute that were like five words. And so I'm like, oh, they did my kind of song, you know, like a little kid, like a child. Yes, if you can memorize these five words and just keep singing them over and over, the effects will be so huge. You know, that was amazing. So thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. All right. So... <laughs> so my name is Sham. Uh-huh. I want to Sham. Sham, S H A M. That's awesome. I used to love Shamu from San Diego. Yeah. From right San Diego Zoo or, or the San Diego uh, Sea World. Yeah, Sea World. Yeah, Sea World. Sea World. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. I that's where my family was from, San Diego, and and so yeah, I, it's Shamu, and now it's Shamwow, you know, 
And um, and if we keep up with the times, it's Shambhala. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Yeah, you okay. know, my name yeah. is evolving. It uh, it means uh, holy light. And, um, oh, that's your and name, Sham- Shambhala. Sham- no, Sham, S-H-A-M. But it's it means okay. holy light. Yeah, Beautiful. and um, Beautiful. and so holy is set aside for sacred use, and so I know that I came here to, um, to be a part of all of this and shine this holy light, the light of God that never fails. So here I Yay. am. <laughs> yes. And now we got to we got to feel that beautiful energy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, mm-hmm. I I know we don't need somebody to tell us that yeah, go ahead, you're doing good or something, but it really does make a difference when uh, another human being says it, you know? <laughs> oh, totally. Keep it up. Oh, Don't yes. stop. Okay. okay. Thank you, Amy. You either. Have a good a good week. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Tell your mom Bye. I said hi, too. I okay. will, absolutely. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Give her a hug. Bye. Okay. Bye. Oh, gosh. I will give her a hug for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh huh. Then, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't know you were going to say something else, and there's a little delay there. But yay, everybody! You guys all have a beautiful night, and thank you so much for listening and watching, and sending you all a big hug. And I guess we'll catch you next time on the Satori Show. 